Hello everyone, Reza here. In this brief tutorial, I will demonstrate how to integrate characters from the Unreal sample project into your own environment using Unreal's new motion matching library, which includes over 500 animations. Let's begin. Prerequisites, make sure to download the motion matching sample project from the Unreal Engine marketplace. Also, basic understanding of Unreal Engine is required. Then you need destination. For this particular tutorial, I'm using Science Fiction Valley Town by Scale Y. It is free this month, June 2024. So make sure to um, download that and not to miss this amazing level. We have two tasks ahead of us. The first task is to migrate the animation from the source sample project into your own level. The second task is to enable all the plugins that we need in order to make motion matching function properly in our destination level. I will walk you through step by step on how to accomplish both tasks. Once they're done, the easy bit is to just bring a blueprint class and bring the character into the level. Let's get to the first one. The animation, well, basically all 500 animations, you can find them under character, UEFN mannequin, and animation. So we have everything at our disposal, idle, run, walk, so on and so forth. You also need to make a decision whether you would like to bring the character directly from this sample project or you want to create your own. If I go into the content and search for CB P for character blueprints. You can see I have character blueprints for all the characters involved in this particular sample project. We can pick one. It really doesn't matter. Why don't we pick this guy right here, which has been retargeted. You can see it's in the blueprints folder, a retargeted character. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to asset actions and I'm going to migrate. What does this bring? If I just collapse some of these folders, perhaps it makes it a little bit easier to see what it brings. It brings the audio, it brings the blueprints, it brings the characters associated with any blueprints, all the inputs and level prototyping and the metahuman folder, which includes the retargeting bits. So with that, I'm going to press OK. And it takes us to the content folder of your destination. So make sure to nominate the content folder of any uh, project folder that you basically have and go select folder. And it's going to fetch those big elements and bring them into your scene. Now, a big, big disclaimer. If you have custom character models that you would like to bring directly into your destination and use it with motion matching, make sure that your characters have the same skeletal structure as the motion matching animations for compatibility. I cannot stress that enough. If the rig is different, it is going to just slide and not going to follow any of these motion matching animations that we have in place. Now the migration has been completed. Because we picked character blueprints, animations also been brought over from source into the destination. The reason for that is if you were to use motion matching system in place from scratch, you need to create a pose search schema setup. This is going to help 
pose search database to use all the animations in order to mix and match the right movement for your character. These two elements will go into an animation blueprint and it uses character blueprint to mix different poses to create motion matching. I guess what I'm trying to say is the animation has to be automatically linked to your character blueprint. And because you brought the character blueprint, it brings the animation over with it. Hope that makes sense. Because we're using the sample project, we don't need to worry about all of those auxiliary nodes and the components that, you know, by default you need to manually add. But just so you know, everything will be brought over automatically. I'm also going to go into Blueprint, clear the filter, and bring this CBP sandbox RNG looking character and also migrate that into my scene using the exact same method. Once that's done, we can go to the next chapter and talk about plugins. What plugins do we need to bring? Why we should bring them and how to enable them. Now we have the character into our destination. We have the animation into our destination. We no longer need the sample project. I can continue the rest in our destination folder. Now before I start, I need certain plugins to be enabled. I'm going to go into edit plugins. And based off of what I've seen so far in certain tutorials, they actually do explain what plugins to bring, but they never explain why. And knowing why you're bringing certain plugins is also quite important. So let's go over those and talk about what to bring and why to bring it. The first one is pose search, which we need to have enable. And pose search plugin search for character poses and animations based on what you have nominated in your database. We brought the blueprint and the blueprint contains the library. So we already have a database and pose search helps in finding animations that match particular poses. That's why we need that plugin. The next one is perhaps the most important one, and that is called motion trajectory. Motion trajectory is the heart and the brain of the system if you want to use motion matching. Because again, if you look into the blueprint, we have motion matching component that's been added into the animation blueprint. And that is directly connected to the post search and into our animation graph. And because of that, we need to have this motion trajectory. And that enables us to predict the motion paths for characters and any particular objects that you're applying motion matching to. So having this is an absolute necessity. The next one is animation warping. We need to have that enabled. And this plugin allows for dynamic adjustments to your animations to fit different scenarios, such as scaling, stretching, modifying animations to match the terrain, obstacles, or even varying character speed. That works hand in hand with motion trajectory. And we need that. If you look at the description, it says that pose is also needed. So there is a dependency that goes with this animation warping, and that is pose or motion, in our case, motion warping. I'm going to enable that as well. And motion warping adjusts the trajectory and timing of character animation to match in-game event. It helps the 
animations to look natural and properly aligned with gameplay interactions. I'm going to enable that as well. The next one is animation locomotion. Now, this one is not that of a deal breaker if you don't have it. So what it gives us is it's going to provide us with a comprehensive set of reusable animations and motion assets for character movements. We basically have over 500 animation clips that are going to help us to have that transition. But if there is any gap, Unreal Engine is going to use Animation Locomotion Library to fill any potential gaps. I did not run into that issue, but it's always good to have this as a backup in case if you're moving your character in a particular fashion that is not included in the existing library provided by Epic Games. So that one is also good. Then we need Deformer graph. Let's see what Deformer Graph does. It provides a node-based interface for building deformation workflows. It enables us to have more detailed and dynamic mesh animation. If you have muscle flexing or facial expression, so all in all, it's going to help us to get a desired look. And the last one is Chooser. And Chooser is um, in charge of decision making within the game. So in our case, appropriate choose of sounds would be a good motivation <laughs> to use the Chooser. Remember, once the character starts walking or running, you can actually hear the footsteps. And Chooser is going to help the engine to pick the appropriate sound and use it within the gameplay. All right. Here's an overview of the plugins that you need to use and why you need to use them. Let's go and restart now. Now we're in the final chapter. We're simply going to create a blueprint class that allows us to load the character onto this level. So I am going to right click and create a blueprint class. And in case you don't know what a Blueprint class is and what it does, um, these classes are extremely powerful and flexible within Unreal. And they allow developers to create complex game logic. Uh, they essentially bridge the gap between designers and programmers. In this particular case, for this particular scenario, I am going to create a game mode base. And game mode defines the rules and flow of the game. There are so many cases that we are not going to explore in this tutorial, like spawn points, scoring, win and loss conditions. But for now, I'm just going to create one. And the whole idea is to introduce my game mode override and bring in a default pawn class. So I'm going to go GM for game mode and type in Paradon, which is the name of the character. Now that goes into the game mode of your world outliner. So if you have the world outliner open, the first rollout is game mode. And under that you have game mode override and nothing has been specified. Basically it expects a blueprint class. So what I can do is to left click, drag and drop it in there. And then it says what type of character you're using. And we have the character blueprint paradon that we initially introduced. So I'm going to go into characters and filter by CBP for character blueprints. Actually, it's in the blueprints, not in the character. And this shows up. If I just open it, I would like to show you something. You can see the paradon is in here and it's the child of the original character mesh, the orange guy. And that's why we kind of migrated that orange guy as well. Seems like I did not drag and drop that in here. So I'm going to drag and drop and save. That's it. Believe it or not, we're pretty much done. I'm going to press play. And Paradon arrives. I can hold down W to move forward. 
and I can press left control on my keyboard and it transitions to walking. See how smooth these transitions are. Tap on the control again, it starts running, space to jump and you can take it from there. I can go into D, A, step to the left, step to the right and uh, the transition is very, very seamless. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I am going to make more videos on motion matching, especially where you need to create some manual work. If you want to create every single component from the ground up, all the motion matching components, the animation blueprint, and uh, setting up the character trajectory in the character blueprint. So stay tuned on this channel. Uh, more content will coming up soon. As usual, thank you very much for your support and for tuning in. Have a great rest of the day. I hope you found this video useful and use this technique in your own projects. Until the next video, see you guys later.